Hi Knitters, Carla here. I recorded a big episode today and instead of putting it into one long episode, I've decided to break this long filming into two parts. Today you'll get the first part and in about a week you'll get the second part. So enjoy. See you soon. It is Carla here, and I am the host of the Knit Nix podcast. For those of you who have uh, been here before, this is a podcast about knitting and all things fiber. And if you're new, welcome. And if you're coming back, <laughs> thanks for coming. It has been one month and one day since my last podcast. The last time I recorded episode 15 was on September the 13th, and today is October the 14th, and it's episode 16. How do you find me? I am Carla Jean on Instagram. I'm also uh, on Ravelry as Knitnix, thus the name of the podcast. And there's two of us on there, so make sure that you are finding knit hyphen nix. So that's K-N-I-T hyphen N-I-X. Welcome. And oh, since that's been a month and, and one day, I have so much to talk about. So let's get started. Um, since my last podcast, I took a trip with my husband, and um, that happened on the weekend of September 24th and 25th. And it was kind of planned, but kind of impromptu. We have a lot of, um, not air, air miles, but like points, some travel points that we had to use up. And if we didn't book a ticket, then we would lose them. So we booked uh, two tickets to New York. And then uh, we went on this adventure, we thought it was going to be a pretty inexpensive holiday because we didn't plan on doing a lot of dining out. We thought we'd just do a lot of street food and a lot of um, museums and stuff. But it turns out you can't book any hotel in New York for under $300 Canadian a night. So uh, we stayed in really close to the Bryant Park area. And I can't remember the name of the hotel, but I will uh, insert that at the bottom. And it was a really, really nice hotel. Um, it was kind of an artsy hotel. Anyhow, my trip to uh, New York City started with us checking into our hotel and uh, I planned just a few little things. I planned on seeing two knit shops while I was there and my husband, Mr. Patient, um, was awesome about going there and uh, kind of sitting in the background <laughs> and letting me do my shopping. The first shop that I went to was one called, I think it's called like the school, I'm gonna put my glasses on here. It was called like the school, here's my bag from there. It was called, the oldest shop, uh, yarn shop in New York City is called School Products Yarn Shop. And um, it's on like the sixth floor of this old building. We went there and we had such a hard time trying to find the place. But uh, we finally did, and we took this elevator. We actually, it's one of those elevators where you, you push the elevator and it kind of a buzzer sounds, and then we got in and I'm like, how do you work this thing? It was like, you had a big handle, and I, I looked at my husband, and then all of a sudden this, this kind of a manager guy jumps in and then asks us where we we're going. And it was like the old elevator operator, he took us up to the shop. So that was kind of cool. And then we arrive in the shop, and it was just, little kind of quaint shop that had um, lots of European yarns by the big bolt. She does a lot of that and I can't remember her name but she has a book that she has published and I'll include a picture of her book right here. There wasn't any Indie Dyer yarn there so she had kind of bulk yarn and after looking and look, checking out colors and everything, I ended up getting this. <laughs> it 
And so today, later on, um, my friend Leslie from YYC Knits is here and she is going to, I'm going to talk to her. She doesn't even know I got this, but I'm going to talk to her about this. Now this is a yarn and I, I, I'll insert the picture of what this yarn is in here. And it's a, it's got cashmere anyway. There's a, it's very squishy because there's a lot of cashmere. And I took a picture of the little sign. That was with it. So that's the only purchase I made from the oldest yarn shop in New York City. Um, this trip, we also did cycling and we went on a wine and cheese tour around the waterways of New York, including the Hudson and the East River. And we uh, did a, um, got a really great view of the Statue of Liberty from the water, which is really spectacular. And I will insert a picture of that in here. And uh, the bikes that we rented uh, were awesome because it was like $12 a day, but there was one catch. They had all these stations all around New York City and you had to get from each, you had to insert your bicycle into the timer kind of thing um, every 30 minutes or you were charged extra. So it was really, actually it was a really good fitness thing because uh, you'd plan where you were, you put your bike in after cycling then you'd look at on the map and find out where the next bike stand was and and you look at each other and go can we get to the from here to there in 30 minutes so it would be like the race is on and we'd be cycling like mad and in time to get our bikes slam our bikes into the next um, kind of a timer bike rack thing so it was a little bit stressful but it was a good fitness to and a great way to see all of New York we cycled all over the place Uh, we went down to the uh, Ground Zero where the fountains were. We went under the we walked across the Brooklyn Bridge and went to a really great pizza place underneath the bridge. Um, I walked so much that this trip, and also on this trip, I re-injured my knee. Um, I was standing on a corner and the light, the walk light was flashing red and it said 13, 12, 11. I said, oh, I can get across. So I kind of dashed out and did a diagonal kind of a unstable uh, dash across the street and my something in behind my knee kind of did a little clicky snap thing and I really hurt my knee. So for the rest of the trip, even though we did a lot of walking, I had to put my a knee brace kind of a support thing on my knee, but that's okay. I, I didn't let it stop me. We did a ton, a ton of walking and uh, now I'm in physiotherapy for my knee to bring it back. It's uh, according to the physiotherapist, there's a muscle on the back of my knee and I've injured it and it's called, it's called your popliteus pop muscle, P-O-P-L-I-T. E-U-S, I think, and it's a little muscle that's on the back of your knee. And it wraps around and it can support the side. So a lot of the knee pain that I have is in behind. He thinks there might be some meniscus involvement. And so we're I'm busy, busy in physiotherapy right now trying to get my knee back to the place where I can run again because I'm really missing the running. Anyway. That's totally aside. So our whole trip to New York was four days and as a part-time teacher that's the beauty is that I can um, only I have I work full days so I can have long weekends and plan little trips like that. So it was a lot of fun, ate a lot, drank a lot, um, lots of wine, lots of really fun um, street food, pizza, it's really great in New York. You walk down um, any street and you poke your nose into these little deli places and they have these enormous pieces of pizza with fresh toppings like feta cheese and peppers and mushrooms. It's delicious and I, we enjoyed that. I also enjoyed a lot of uh, really great New York bagels and cream cheese, which I love. And yeah, it was just a fun little escape getaway. And my daughter who's living with us here uh, looked after our dog, so we didn't have to worry about that. It was, yeah, just a great trip. And then I, we get home, I think we got home on the Monday, and then I left on the Friday for Knit City. So I'm gonna talk about that now. Um, Knit City was a one, oh, let, back up a little bit. The other, a uh, yarn shop that I went to was something, uh, a little yarn shop called Nitty City. 
and it was one that Glenda from Wet Coast Wills, uh, Wet Coast Wools told me to go to. So I went there and I bought some, didn't buy any yarn because I have a lot of yarn right now. <laughs> and I knew that Knit City was coming up. And so I bought um, some little project bags and a lunch bag for my vice principal and some stitch markers for my friend Carmen for her birthday and a few things like that. So they, and this is the bag that they put it in for me. It's a little, here it is. Where does it say? Yeah, it says right up on the top there. If you can see that. It says Nitty City, and it's a great little yarn shop in a really kind of a residential area. And while I was in there, my husband went next door and ordered us wine and an appetizer. <laughs> so after I was done shopping, I just kind of went outside and, oh, there's my husband on the patio waving to me. And we sat and had shared a bottle of wine and had a really nice appetizer. The weather at the end of September was beautiful in New York. So it was a lovely time to go. The trees hadn't start turning yet, maybe slightly a few little yellow leaves on some of the trees, but Central Park was uh, pretty much green and, and as we cycled through Central Park, etc. Anyway, it was a great trip and now on to Knit City. So at Knit City, um, my friend Carmen and I, uh, we were gonna take the boys with us, but instead the boys did their own trip. They actually took my husband's uh, what he calls his summer car down they was, uh, drove it down to Palm Springs it's a Corvette anyway it's one of those kind of boy toy muscle cars and they they drove it down to Palm Springs and then flew back so that while they were doing that and having a guy kind of trip uh, Carmen and I jumped on a WestJet air, uh, airplane and on the Friday morning and we went to Vancouver and we arrived in Vancouver and our other high school friend Joy met us at the airport and we went to her place and just hung out there and had, um, had a good visit with her husband and met her daughter, one of her, one of her daughters. And we had a really great little visit there and then uh, later on in the evening she uh, took us to our hotel where we checked in and we stayed in the atrium hotel which was right beside Knit City so it was really we didn't really need a vehicle at all after that so Carmen and I uh, got a room together and Joy because she lives in Vancouver our high school friend she stayed of course at her place and joined us each day so Carmen and I checked in to our hotel and then uh, it was kind of close to the time where the first speaker uh, you sold a Teague, I think her name is, something to that effect. I'm sure I botched it up, but I will put her name down at the bottom. She spoke, and then most of the fellow podcasters and knitters that I know that were going to be there um, were uh, there watching that. So um, I kind of texted Shannon, who is Soxetra, and also her friend uh, Alicia, she is Two Tips podcast, and I went down to um, Marsha, who is very little, or a Twitch and Stitch podcast. She had a room there, and I just, we, Carmen and I just sat on the bed there, and we just chatted and uh, kind of said hello. I had um, previously met Shannon at, in Sorrento this uh, spring, and that's when I first met her at the uh, retreat there in Sorrento. And so uh, we, I had knew her and we sat and visited and they were in their PJs and we were tired. So we uh, chatted for a bit and then I went back to the room with Carmen and then people came back from the speaker, the first speaker uh, on the Friday night and went into the pub down there. So I went in and uh, had a visit with uh, some of the people. Um, there was Loose Pages and I think her name is Sarah, if I'm not incorrect and then there was um, Marsha and Scylla the sisters who do the twitch and stitch podcast and it just turned out that it was um, karaoke night <laughs> and they I have some video of them singing and some pictures I'll maybe I'll instead of sort of picture of uh, maybe one or two of them doing karaoke I I did not have enough beer inside me to actually do karaoke, so I just enjoyed uh, other people making silly fools of themselves <laughs> while they uh, 
sang and I think uh, Marsha even had a boa on. So she really got into the role. Anyway, so yeah, that was fun. Um, and then I went up to the room and I slipped into the room. Carmen was sleeping. She didn't even hear me come in. But let me tell you, that night in that hotel room was awful. We were in, we got there late, so we probably got the last hotel room. And it happened to be that our door wouldn't lock. Uh, sorry, our patio door wouldn't lock. So that was kind of number one, first thing to go wrong. And then um, it was so hot in there, we couldn't control the heat. It was like probably 80 degrees in there. And when you're menopausal <laughs> and you don't like heat at the best of times, having the heat so high, so we had to open the window to compensate. Well, to open the window, we are right on a main drag there and there was people from the bar right below us and, and lots of traffic noise and it was just really noisy while trying to get to sleep. So I, the next, so that was not a great sleep, but the very next day I called down to the front desk and I just was really kind and I tried to be um, dipl uh, diplomatically firm about our room and asked if there was anything they could do to move us to a different part of the hotel that had a better uh, thermostat that would that we could control and that wasn't right directly on the main drag and the guy at the front desk of the atrium was awesome he uh, said no problem he called us back a few minutes later after he did some organizing and he bumped us to a king suite so for our second night we had this amazing room we had, it had its own little fridge and its own little kitchenette and a little sofa because the last room we had just had two queen beds and we this big king bed that we shared, which is not a problem when you're used to sleeping with a you know a husband who's a bed hog. Yeah. Carmen and I both could easily sleep in a king bed very comfortably. So yeah, we got our accommodations bumped, which was awesome. But uh, on the Saturday morning, uh, we headed over to the marketplace and uh, we walked in and I got my, uh, they checked me in and her in because we both had, we were registered in classes. I took, on the first day, I took uh, the Susan B. Anderson um, Shawl Shapes course and so you get an, a wristband for the whole weekend so it gets you in and out of the marketplace. And then I grabbed all my stuff that I needed for my class and I found the classroom and I met Susan. She was busy setting up and I didn't want, I didn't want to sound like I was a groupie, but I am. <laughs> so I went in there and introduced myself and told her that I absolutely love her work and I didn't want, I know she was busy setting up. So I found a really great place to sit close to the front, dropped my stuff off and then I went around and got a hug and a hello and uh, just a little quiet one-on-one -on -one with her, just for 30 seconds, nothing major. And then I dropped my stuff off and went back to the marketplace and, with, and met with Carmen and we walked around and um, did a few of the vendors. Uh, I texted Marsha because she was in my class and said, hurry up and get to the to the room where um, Susan's teaching because that and get a seat beside me. I'm right near the front. So she put her bag there and I I met my friend Mary Morgan, who's been a friend of mine forever. She also was registered in the class and I told her to sit by me. So we had a nice little group to sit with. And also in our class, which was kind of cool, was uh, Jody and Tracy from the Grocery Girls. They were in our class as well. So it was a really cool, I, would, I got three hours to sit and stare at Susan. She's as lovely in person as she is on her podcast and on her little instructional videos. Um, she is just... I thought she was going to be taller. I always imagined her to be this tall. I know she's a runner, or she was a runner or an athletic, so I always pictured her to be this tall, lanky lady. And she was, well, she's not short, but she's, I thought she'd be at least as tall as me, but she's a little shorter than me. She had all her uh, dolls that she makes there and she we, oh and I brought a book in. I brought my kids knitting book that I uh, have at school and 
she signed it for me. It's so cool. This is from her, and I just thought that was really cool that she signed it for me. So that was really neat. And the course, she provided some handouts. She provided some lace charts, handwritten by her. She provided a course. Oh, she talked about all the different shawl shapes, which was the name of the course, and there's all of them on a little handout that she provided. All handwritten, and then she also provided like um, explanations of all of her of her increases, decreases, etc. And yeah, so it was awesome. She was a wealth of information. She gave us some really neat increasing ideas. She showed us so many really neat little tricks and tips. And uh, she helped me decide on a shawl to make. And I will talk about that in my works in progress. I started a shawl from her class using some of my yarn that I got from Hugh Loco, some beautiful kind of a denim colored yarn. And she showed us how to put beads into your shawls, which is something I'm gonna do with this shawl. So that was, that class, I can't say anything more, but positive praise to Susan and all her wonderful teaching ways. She's got a soft, gentle, wonderful way of explaining things. She took, divided the class into groups and uh, she repeated the same kind of lesson in a smaller group setting and we, she called it like group A, group B, group C. And we went up and got a lesson, private little kind of small group lesson. And she explained everything beautifully. So I kudos to you, Susan. Thank you so much for that awesome opportunity to meet you and to get some great tips and tricks and pattern ideas from one of the best in the industry. So that was my Saturday morning class. And then uh, we met and we had a little lunch. They had food trucks outside on the forum area it was it it's it was located in Vancouver right where they do the Pacific National Exhibition it's kind of the fairgrounds and so we went out and had uh, food truck food and ate in the kind of the food court area and then we wandered around and did some of some shopping and I will talk about some of my acquisitions later I got I actually bought very little I was pretty impressed with my, myself but both Carmen and Joy bought me something as friends do and I bought them a few things as well uh, actually, uh, I didn't buy Joy anything this trip, but when she was here in Calgary, I bought her something, so she wanted to get me a little something, I guess. But I will talk about that later in my acquisitions. Um, then, so we went for dinner. Uh, we kind of did the market, and then we went out to a... We tried to eat at the... Um, what is the place there? It's kind of their pub that they have right in the atrium. Uh, but they were so understaffed that night uh, that... I asked if it was like an hour before we had our evening um, kind of a talk with um, Stephanie Pearl McPhee and I think my dog is barking because I think my friend Leslie's going to be here. Anyway, so we had a beautiful dinner at, um, what was it? It was like a Vietnamese place across the way and the food was exceptional. I mean, it was right across the street. And we got it really quick. That's one thing that's fresh and fast. And then we made it to our Stephanie Pearl McPhee lecture. Uh, CBC, I think it was CBC News, did a little article about her and this, the uh, talk that she gave, which was exceptional. She is a very gifted speaker, awesome knitter. And she is the yarn harlot, if you've ever heard of her. And she has written several books. And she goes and speaks to knitting groups and uh, at conferences. And she is um, absolutely uh, an inspiration to listen to. Funny, dry humor. She talked about knitting as an addiction and she went through all the points about what addiction is. And, and if you put drug, if you took out the word drug and put the word yarn or the word knitting in place of all the things for addiction, you basically describe <laughs> what us as knitters are. And we all were chuckling, but she just gave a great spe uh, speech or a talk. And then uh, we all ended and went back to, oh yeah, and so Joy joined us during the marketplace and she also joined us for dinner and also for the uh, talk with uh, Stephanie Pearl McPhee. So uh, 
I'm trying to think. Do we, I think we said goodnight to, to Joy. I popped into the uh, bar just to see if there's any podcasters there, and I, I did meet up and talk to a few. Uh, I saw Susan B. Anderson there, and I she looked really tired. She's got, I think there's three hours difference between Vancouver and where she's from. In, uh, I think she's in uh, Madison, Wisconsin is where her hometown is. And I think that's like at least two, possibly three hours from Vancouver time. So she was sitting there with uh, Tracy and Jody in the pub there. And everybody, everybody was, it's so funny to see a bar scene where all the clientele are sitting there knitting. It was kind of cool. <laughs> Only in a, at a knitting convention. So I, I said my hellos. Oh, and then, yes, that was right, too. I, I went up to the room with Carmen for a bit, and then I came down, and I... Oh, no, Carmen was with me. I'm going to insert a little clip here, because down in the, in the um, lobby area was uh, a group of knitters, including Jody and Tracy and Marsha from Twitch and Stitch, and I just kind of went around the table and, or the, not their table, but the kind of the seating area and said a hello. And then Marsha sang us a little song. So I'll insert that clip. Right. Yeah. I'm filming you. Say hello. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Say hello. Hello. I heard the gene. So that's the way I heard it. Hello. Say hello. Who are we talking to? I don't know. Oh. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. This is what happens in Knit City. And what happens in Knit City, what happens in Knit City stays in Knit City. Say that again. I want to hear it rendition. Sing it. Come on. No way. Come on. Come on. Sing it. Sing it, girl. We knit this city with sticks and yarn. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, instead of we built this city, we knit this city. She's pretty cool. That Marsha, I love her. And her sister, Scylla. Hi, Marsha and Scylla. Hi, Jody and Tracy. That was fun. So yeah, that was the end of Saturday. And then Sunday morning, uh, Joy came and met us in the morning. We, uh, Carmen and I and Joy had breakfast at the atrium. And then we headed over. I had the um, Spinning 101 Let's Make Yarn. It was how to use a drop spindle with Diana Twiss. And that was a great class. And I, mine was in the atrium in our hotel in a, one of the conference rooms. And Carmen's was over back at the um, kind of the grounds where the peonies, the exhibition grounds, and hers was in design. And then Joy was also at the Atrium Hotel, and hers was a class in color work with Kate Atherby, I think. Atherley? Atherley, I think is her last name. And hers was right next door to mine. So we had our classes, and everybody got something from their class, thought, thought it was good. And Carmen enjoyed hers, but Carmen right now is currently suffering a, a knitting. No, actually, it's a, an injury she got when she was carrying her dog down the stairs, and he moved, and he pulled her thumb back, and she's got a fracture and a teared ligament, and she's got a fluid on her wrist. I mean, she's got lots of problems going on. And this happened quite a while ago, and she just thought, oh, it's just I'll ice it and rest. But then she went and had it x-rayed and examined with the ultrasound, and they found that it had a fracture and all kinds of stuff going on. So she's um, kind of in a lot of pain right now, and she can't knit, which is brings tears to her eyes when she talks about it. And I get that, because we are all as knitters love to um, not have any injuries that get in the way of our progress when we're knitting. So yeah, so she was, wasn't able to do a lot of knitting, but she took a class on design and enjoyed that. It was right around lunchtime and we met another friend of ours from our knitting guild there and we all had lunch again outside and it was beautifully sunshiny there and we sat and ate and talked about our classes and caught up with our other friend who also lives in Vancouver. And then I didn't get much of opportunity on the Saturday to do any uh, much of the marketplace so I went, went around and did a little more damage. <laughs> I bought, actually I bought more things than yarn. I bought some bags and I bought some fleece because now that I know how to drop spindle, 
Um, oh, I'm gonna see if I can find it. Where is my actual fleece? Oh, well, here's my some of my yarn that I made. So that's kind of cool. And then I have my skein, but if I run across it during my acquisitions, which I think that's where it is, I will share my uh, first little mini skein of yarn that I made. So that was Knit City. Oh, and then uh, after that Sunday morning, before we went to our classes, we threw all of our bags and we checked out of our hotel and threw our bags and stuff into Joy's, uh, the back of her truck. And after we were finished on the Sunday, we said our goodbyes to people at the marketplace. Said goodbye to Shannon about three times. <laughs> And then we went on the Sunday night and stayed one more night at Joy's place because we didn't really get much opportunity to do some quality chatting. And there we had, oh yeah, we also had dinner at Joy's the first night. That's right too. Carmen bought chicken and stuff. So that's what happened on our first night. We had dinner with Joy before we went to our, our hotel. But on the Sunday night, uh, we also, we just did a bunch of appetizers and bought wine and had a movie and chatted and we slept overnight and then the next day we sat and knit, well, I, at least I did, Carmen couldn't, but Joy and I sat and knit and we all chatted and had a wonderful um, kind of catch up time and then she took us back to the airport and on the Monday we flew home from the airport. So that was really cool, that was great. Yeah, it was a really great weekend. I lot, saw lots of fellow podcasters, lots of, uh, learned lots of really great techniques, got to see Vancouver's knit scene and all the great indie dyers and Sweet Georgia Yarn and uh, Wet Coast Wools had a booth there and I got something from there. So yeah, I'm going to now <laughs> move on to my acquisitions. So let's do that. I wanna get that out of the way. So at Knit City, there was a booth from the, um, Tracy from the uh, Grocery Girls. She works for, at a store in Edmonton and that store is River City Yarns. And if you were one of the first 50 people to make a purchase, you got that bag. And of course I had to buy, or I didn't buy it. My girlfriend Carmen bought me this. She bought me a hat trick. And this is a yarn that they do at River City. They have a dyer diet for them. Uh, and let me put my glasses on. It's a well-known dyer in this, these parts. It is made by uh, Ancient Arts. Ancient Arts. They do this yarn and they do all of the, this is the Calgary Flames yarn. So I was thinking that I would knit these. See that little bit of gold in there and some black and white and red. And this is called hat trick because those of you who know hockey, that's a famous, if you get three goals, you get a hat trick. And it says here, Carmen gave me this, it says here, I scored my first hat trick. So anyway, so I bought that. Oh, I didn't, sorry. Thank you, Carmen. She bought this for me. That was awesome. And so that's what I got at River City Yarns. And then I walked over to the booth where our lovely ladies from, oh, I love these ladies. This is the Mad Color, um, Mad, M-A-D, Color, uh, from Tin Can Knits. And the Tin Can Knits ladies were both there and I got my picture taken with them and they both signed my book for me. This is their newest book from Tin Can Knits. And it's got all kinds of really colorful uh, afghans and throws and hats using a lot of color work. And I got my picture taken and I'll insert that picture here. So yes, that is what I got that at Tin Can Knits booth. And then, oh, the first thing I did when I walked into, uh, on the first day, I walked in and they and these are awesome. I bought one of these for myself and one of these for Carmen. This is a really cool uh, journal, that, but it's also what I love. It's got a uh, graph paper in it. And this graph paper, as you as knitters know, that you can do some designs or you can draw out your ideas or you can take notes. 
So I love that. And it's I, I, I yarn, YVR. I love with yarn, YVR, which means Vancouver. That's the three letter code for Vancouver. And then that was all what I bought, I think on this, or I got acquired, thanks Carmen, on this Saturday. And then on the Sunday when I cruised around, um, oh, this is the part of my class. She gave us all um, some fleece. Some Is it called fleece? Or roving? Anyway, she gave us the fiber for us to spin. And because I was new to spinning and I'm very excited about it, I went to a, a lovely booth and I got, I went to, it's called Humming Bee Farms. And I asked the ladies there, you know, what is a really great yarn for you to, to spin if you're new to spinning? And I picked up this, and I think this will make a lovely cowl or a little shawlette. I'll spin this into some hand spun fiber. And this fiber is called, it's Perindale wool. And it's two ounces, so I got four ounces of hand dyed Perindale. And uh, they said because of the staple is a nice length that it'll be easy for me to spin. So I got that from the lovely ladies at Humming Bee Farm. And I also went and bought fleece by the, they weigh, they'd weigh it. And this is West Coast color. And I got to pick some colors from there. And I went, to, I went with pink and brown. Lately, I've been into dark chocolate brown and pinks. I like brown with a, almost any color because it. I, I love it with purple. I love it with pink. I love it with uh, greens. But anyway, so I bought some more fleece from the, those lovely ladies there. And then they weigh it for you and you buy it. And I think this was like maybe $15 worth of yarn. And this is their card, West Coast color. So I bought that. And then I visited the ladies <laughs> at Wet Coast Wools. And I must say, Bernadette has the best style. She was dressed up. She just looks so cute all the time. She sews her own uh, dresses. She knits her own sweaters. And she dyes her hair cool colors. And she, and she gave me a button out of her little pocket. Um, a little button from their yarn shop. She had it in her little pocket. And then I bought some sock yarn, and what, uh, I, I have a lot of sock yarn, but I don't have, look at this. This has got Stellina in it. It's sparkly. And this is from, let me look at my this here. This is K-Zip Knits. Color looks good on you. And this is a sparkle sock, 70% merino, 25% nylon, and 5% Stellina. And it's 100 grams, and this one's called purple dinosaur and so I might call these Barney socks but anyway look at this sparkle can you see how it's sparkling love it so that's that was probably the only thing that I purchased for myself um let's see uh let me see I think that is it for oh no 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 and then at Knit City I went over to uh, a booth and where's their little tag thingy because they are an awesome group of ladies who, um, I would like to find that if I could. I think it's in here. Anyway, it's a wine bag and it's made. This is the coolest thing. They had it displayed with a bottle of wine. It's a wine bag and it's got mesh in it. And the reason I'm really st uh, taken by this is my husband is in the screening business and in our garage, him and I sew um, mesh. Oh, there's their tag. They, we sew mesh for um, screen rooms. And we have so many scraps of uh, this kind of product left over. I mean, we're talking big chunks. So I thought if I could incorporate some mesh into some bags, that would be awesome. And here is the group that do it. They are called the Tikam Olam Gogas. This bag was by, made by the Tikan. Tikan Olam Gogas in support of the Stephen Lewis Foundation. It's grandmothers to grandmothers. So it's a group that um, they sew all these beautiful totes. And there's their card. And their proceeds go to the Stephen Lewis Foundation, which is an amazing organization. 
and it's grandmothers helping grandmothers. So that's kind of cool. And then I bought this big bag as well with the same thing, but I just fell in love with it. I'm very much, I love the, the earthy tones. And Carmen bought one too, but hers had all these lovely beads dangling down, which I love, but I didn't want to steal her thunder and uh, you know get one just like hers, but I got this one, which totally makes me happy. And it's uh, got a lot of African prints because uh, they support uh, grandmothers in Africa with some of the funds that they uh, make as well. So it's grandmothers helping grandmothers. So anyway, that is that, and that is this. And yeah, awesome. I think that is it for acquisitions. So I'm gonna move on to my works in progress, but I'm gonna wait for my girlfriend <laughs> Leslie to get here. She's coming, I, I didn't mention that. Well, I sort of mentioned a bit, but she's coming in and we are going to talk a little bit and we're gonna talk about her whips. She's got a hashtag on Instagram now. I think it's show us, show me your whips or something to that effect. Um, but I will, more about that when she gets here. Anyway, I've chatted enough. I'm sure you're bored of hearing my voice. And when she gets here, we'll do the next part of our maybe 10 minutes or so of some chatting and we'll share our whips together. So, and our FOs. I have one FO and you'll be surprised to know which one it is. And then I am also going to, um, at the very end, talk about the winners of my uh, giveaways. And uh, that's about it, I think. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll be back in a minute with Leslie. <laughs> Look at you with so, your look at your hair. I brought lunch. Hey, you did. <laughs> my hair. My hair is You got hot hair, hair, but you got great hair. It's and look, crazy. tell me about your cowl. Oh my cowl. So this is the Trapper cowl, mm -hmm. and it's double knit. It took me forever to knit it, but yeah. it's on my um, Instagram YYC Knits, so you can check it out there. And my uh, Ravelry as well. Is that your thing. yarn? So this is not, this is Manos del Uruguay, mm -hmm. uh, Manos Maxima, I believe. And uh, yeah, so. She just took off that lovely hat, which I've I love. I've got my Carnaby skirt on. Oh, look, did you make which this? I did. <gasps> I oh my gosh. It's so oh fun my gosh. with the red buttons. I'll say. And, um, did you make your sweater? I made my sweater. <gasps> it's actually my design, but I haven't written it up yet oh, okay. or tested it because, you know, that's another whole huge right. process. Tucker loves you. But I know, hey, he's yeah. like, you smell like alpaca and wool and all the good stuff. Hey, sweetie. And look, Leslie yeah. brought lunch. I Tell know. me about your lunch, Oh Les. my gosh. Please. Well, look my this. brother, my brother um, lives out on Vancouver Island mm -hmm. and he has a a buddy who is a tuna fisherman and he fished for this wild albacore tuna product of Canada like no kidding this is like real the real deal act um, in Nanus B mm -hmm. ba uh, Nanus Bay BC mm -hmm. That's and, on Vancouver Island. and it's on Vancouver Island close mm -hmm. to my brother so he this is what I get for Christmas from him cases mm -hmm. of tuna which is awesome so and look, she brought a I made a board and that's I all brought knives and I brought tuna all done up with ranch dressing and then I brought some buns and I I made this um salad this morning with oh bokeh niki cheese and some oh evoo and then i made this with feta oh and peppers and i usually put garlic in this but we'll and then i got cucumbers and cutting boards and sheep of course we got to bring some sheep and i got some tea i brought some jasmine tea oh to help goodness. us with our digestion okay there you go there we so go i'm hosting this like it's at my house and she brings food oh and i brought salt and pepper I too because awesome. you know you never know got oh, and salt little and pepper. cucumbers you little cucumbers i love these Gotta eat them. Awesome. Well, we'll eat lunch and then we'll start on to our little whips in our pot and talk about our do a little knitting and talking awesome. in a bit. So let's eat shopping. <laughs> winner of the first ever giveaway the spooktacular subscriber giveaway is
Molly Klein Design. And the winner of the Angel Natasha giveaway on YouTube is... Misty Chandler.